Today we're going to discuss the case of a person who had mild elevation in calcium levels and had parathyroid hyperplasia, what the surgery was and how they recovered over the years. I'm Dr. Bob Aklari. I'm from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. So this is a 73-year-old woman who on routine labs was found to have a calcium that was higher than normal. Fortunately, her primary doctor was attentive and noticed this calcium elevation. And um, in talking to her, discovered that she has fatigue, brain fog, memory issues, bone pain, muscle weakness, poor sleep, anxiety, frequent urination, high blood pressure, and palpitations. Um, checking the PTH levels, there was an elevation in PTH as well. The vitamin D was normal, so this wasn't a case of secondary uh, changes in PTH or calcium. And an in-office ultrasound showed a possible left inferior parathyroid one that was enlarged. Uh, 4D CT scan also showed that left-sided parathyroid that was enlarged, but it only showed it to be minimally enlarged. And you could visually see some of the other parathyroid glands or potentially see them. This is what, what was seen on ultrasound, and you can see right, right here a parathyroid gland, and this is the thyroid gland itself. And skin is up here, okay? So it looked fairly convincing that this was an enlarged abnormal parathyroid gland. So she, she went to surgery. Um, I took her to the operating room in 2021. She had a left inferior parathyroid gland removed. It was superficial to the vocal cord nerve. It was very easy to remove. And I checked the PTH. It was 86 before removing the parathyroid. At 5, 10, and 15 minutes after this parathyroid gland here was removed, the PTH just came down to less than 50%. It wasn't an adequate drop. The uh, pathology report during surgery said it was an abnormal parathyroid gland, but the PTH didn't drop. So that told me that there's another gland that was abnormal. So I went and looked for the other three parathyroid glands. I found all of the remaining three glands and they all look slightly abnormal and enlarged. Um, the right lower one was the smallest one, and uh, a small portion was sent for, uh, for the pathologist to look at to confirm that it was parathyroid tissue. The other two, the left and right upper parathyroids, were also biopsied, confirmed to be parathyroids. Those two were removed, so the left and right upper parathyroids were also additionally removed, right, after biopsying the right lower. Okay. And once that was done, the PTH levels were checked and they were now 23, 18, and 16. So dramatically lower than what it was originally, right? But also in the low normal range, which tells me that the parathyroid that I had left behind was functioning adequately for the person to be fine and that not need any other supplementation in the long term. Um, so she did very well with surgery, went home the same day. I placed her on calcium vitamin D and magnesium uh, supplementations. I oftentimes use arnica and bromelain for to decrease bruising and swelling. She did very well. Um, and over the years, I followed her calcium levels and they dropped from a 10.5, at one month, 9.9, .9, at six months, 9.3, and then 9.2, with PTH levels that were normal and vitamin D levels that were robust and healthy and normal. Um, so, I always do, I always try to do uh, questionnaires for the patients. Um, not everybody is uh, compliant with it or has the patience to deal with it. Uh, but in any case, I, I do them as much as I can. Before surgery, these were her numbers. And this is a hyperparathyroidism symptoms questionnaire. And the lower the number, the more symptoms they have. So zero means they always have symptoms four means they never have symptoms and you know so the lower the number the more symptomatic the person is so she started at a 48 at six months after surgery she jumped up to 72 so you can see some of these parameters were less and less frequent higher numbers right by one year she was at 78 much 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 less frequent right and then by the four-year mark, she was maintaining roughly the same number. 
but the nighttime urination was slowly feeling a little bit better. So the improvements happened and then they were maintained over the long term. So even though she had mild elevation in calcium and she did have hyperplasia, she not only had a successful treatment that was symptomatically relieving of the symptoms that bothered her, those, those improvements lasted over the years. If you're interested in clear parathyroid information, visit us at parathyroid.net. Be well.